Hello guys, welcome again to my channel. This is Hamoudi from Bilu Media. If you are new here, welcome. I am happy to have you with me. Today I have a special thing to do. Every time I have something special, but uh, today I have a 5 inch drone to build. It's very nice uh, frame. It is the Speedy B. Speedy B was kind enough to send me the Master 5 HD version. It's really nice uh, and well organized uh, frame. I love it. So thank you Speedy B. And they also gave me the F722, I think F7, F7 stack, which is really nice. I really like how it looks. It's really uh, nice and the thing that I like the most about this is that it has plugs for everything so but you can uh, also solder your wires here if you want so it uh, gives you the freedom to choose what uh, you will do and if you damage accidentally those uh, plugs you can use the pads uh, from the back let's start by showing you what i have here i really have a busy desk but let me start with uh, what we will gonna do today i organized the frame already here i advise you to do the same so it will be easier for you to to assemble so i have everything here well organized and uh, I will clear in the middle the space and build it step by step. For this, I have the DJI O3 unit. This is really great because uh, it has a great footage quality and I don't need a GoPro for my, at least for what I do, I don't need a GoPro. I have a GPS here, it's the iFlight GPS. I have a back here from Matic. I want to wire the DJI directly from the back because I heard some people that they lost uh, signal from the uh, air unit. I have the buzzer here, VFly I think, yeah it's VFly, Radio Master ELRS RP1, the Zing motors, this is the Zing 2207-1750 kV motor, the smoke stopper and I have the full send 1300 battery from iFlight. Along with the uh, builds and uh, the accessories that we have, I have a lot of tools that some of them are mandatory, some of them are not so mandatory but good to have. So let me start with the soldering iron. This is the Miniware TS101. It's a great uh, soldering iron, I really love it. And uh, Miniware was kind enough to send me this and the ES15 uh, screwdriver, electric screwdriver. And this is really a piece of art, I really love it. It's built like a tank and it uh, works perfectly. For those, I printed those cases with my 3D printer just to protect them and keep them well organized. So those are really nice to have. I recommend uh, you to buy those because they are really nice and enjoyable. I really like to enjoy my tools while, while I am working because it gives me uh, greater result and I feel good. Uh, I have here a manual tool as well if I needed. Tweezers set. It's really nice set and you need some of them. Not all of them but uh, I found it on Amazon uh, and it was good. I will leave a link of uh, everything that I use here so you can check it out and buy it if you want. Pliers cutter this is really nice i love the, those things this is flux uh, you don't have to use it but uh, way easier to solder things solder the wires on the pads so it's really nice to have uh, this is a tube 
I like to organize uh, my wires, the motor uh, wires, uh, in these tubes to have it cleaner and uh, it looks good. I, I really like uh, things to look good. This is magnifier glasses. It's really nice to have. If you are 20, uh, maybe you don't need it, but I'm not and I need it. Hot air gun for uh, the heat shrink tubes. Those are the heat shrink tubes that we will use on the motors and some, some of the components. I bought this recently and I really love this thing. This is helping hands basically and it's really, really nice. It's magnetic, so everything sticks like this. And here you can put your electronics and uh, secure them in place, which is really, really great. And this arm, you can use it for securing the drone itself and bigger things like this and you tighten this out and you can uh, uh, work on it and I uh, did something else I attached the GoPro to this arm and you put it like here and you can put the GoPro wherever you want so I can film uh, in greater detail for you guys to see what I am doing. I have a camera up, of course, but this is uh, uh, closer and maybe I need uh, uh, this footage from time to time. Let's uh, start building the bottom uh, side of the frame. For this you have four arms, of course, and the bottom line, uh, bottom part. And this is a dampening pad for the ESC that we will put down. So for this we will start with this plate right here and we will put this right in the middle and those like this, the arms like this. And you have four screws, bigger screws and four smaller screws. The small screws goes here and the big screws goes like this. And we will do the same, the same for the other part. Perfect. And now this part comes here. Those nuts are facing up like this. And we will tighten those screws right now and the other ones in the next step. Now we have those adapters or uh, tubes. I don't know how you call them. They are really nice. You can see the SpeedyB name here. I really like about this that you can use it manual and it has resistance so it, uh, it doesn't go uh, back. It's really a nice thing to have because I don't want to change uh, screwdrivers every time I work. And this is really, really nice. I love it. For the front part we have those right here and the screws and this those for attaching to the bottom plate so this is basically the camera uh, mount we have dampening pads here that, that I already put in place those small ones here like this and you simply put this one here like this and you have small screws to attach and we will do the same for this one now we have to attach uh, those two to the front of the frame to secure everything together we have a uh, upper frame small frame this one and four screws i really like this uh, in this frame you you put this here like this and after you have a plate here so when you need to change something you don't need to take apart all the frame only the the upper part this one from here and that's it you can work on on your frame this is the frame this is how it looks it looks nice so this is the base part of the frame and we have this one that is the upper part now let me put 
these. These are the feet of the arm and you simply put it like this first part and this is really nice touch. I really like it. This is a heat sink for the DJI air unit and you have an adapter for the DJI air unit so the heat will be transferred through this and this comes simply uh, here like this so it looks like this I really like how it looks I want to put the motors here now you have screws with them two of them are okay but two of them um, I have a package here uh, full of M3 uh, screws and I will use those screws those are a little bit long but it's okay it doesn't uh, harm I really like how those motors look they are really nice and sexy for this we will use the screw provided in the kit here and here because we have TPU we will use the longer screws so first one is done so this is how it looks right now I want to attach now the GPS and the ELRS antenna in, uh, in the back of the drone and SpeedyB provided me provided uh, us with uh, those TPU mounts this is the GPS and it's a plug and play sort of plug and play and this part will go here like so and it looks like this which is really nice this comes on top like this and here you put the antenna of the DJI let me open it like this it stays like so these tubes come here like this one on each side and this part of the DJI antenna comes on top they provide another one for different antenna but I have the DJI and I need this one like this so this is how it looks now messy right a lot of mess here yeah but it uh, it's starting to take shape this cable is short I mean the cable from the air unit to the camera so the air unit sits here and the camera doesn't go to the end so this is why I have another cable which is longer as you can see it's way longer we need to open the unit here and take those screws out and now you can take the cable out just be careful not to damage the connection so here we have two screws one here and one in the other side and this back part will pop out just like this and here you have the connection you have to do the same with this just be careful to take it out really gentle I will use my glasses my magnifier to see what I'm doing here we have to remove this glue for this I have this knife so I will try to gently remove the glue from here like this so I will cut it piece by piece oh perfect so this is the glue now I want to push the rubber out so this is why guys you need so many tools to make your life easier you can do it with less tools but uh, it's way easier so now we have it out which is perfect so this part comes inside you have smaller part I mean narrower part and thicker part the thicker part is outside and the thinner part will go inside put 
this back. It looks like this. Now we have to attach it back to our air unit. Another click here. Now we put back the cover. Now, as you can see, the camera arrives to the front of the quad, which is perfect. So we have enough space to bring it to the front. Now I want to attach the air unit here and the camera in the front. So we attach the air unit here and we attach this to the frame. You have to use those screws, they are longer. It fits like a glove, really great. You have a cutout here so you can root the wires to the front, which is really nice, like this. Perfect, so we have the air unit attached and the wires to the front. I want now to attach the camera so those wires will be under, I mean, the ESC. You have uh, more holes to put. I will choose the middle. Perfect. We attached the camera, as you can see. Now I want to put the ESC in the frame and start soldering the motors. and this guy here super and it's starting to look perfect i i really love it now i will connect the capacitor here we have some holes here if you can see and the wires for the battery plug just be careful how you connect this you have to connect the minus uh, to the minus and the plus to the plus so this part is the minus the shorter one and the other one is the plus i really love this thing it's really fantastic this one heats really really fast i really love this thing so let's check this is the minus and this is the plus This is really, really clean. I love it. I want to put some heat shrink tubes to protect it even more. Like this. I have to cut uh, the wires now and see they recommend two centimeters. start with the red one we have just to press it down until it melts and join the down perfect this will stay in place I had to do another solution after all because I uh, cut the wires of the capacitor a little bit uh, short I didn't uh, see the scheme here here you see it shows you exactly how to cut them. I mean to make it a little bit longer and then those wires will bend and will come uh, up. I ended up putting the capacitor here up. Next step, I want to put this here and attach the wires of the motors. I will run the wires like this here and they will come up here now I have to strip uh, all the wires so I can solder them pretend them and solder them 
Now let's go ahead and pre-tin the wires. Now I want to prepare the pads of the ESC. You see it's really clean and nothing is touching. I mean, there is no bridging and stuff like this. So now we can prepare the motors and attach them. I think it's easier to take the motors out because uh, I need to put a heat shrink here. So let me do this real quick. So let me do it for this motor and I will show you. And after I will do it for the other motors as well, like this. Perfect. I really like how this looks. It looks like it's made in the factory. <laughs> Perfect. Now is the part where we will solder the wires to the ESC and then it will look way cleaner and nicer. Perfect guys, it looks very nice. Now I want to connect the stack and I want to put it like this because I have here the cable uh, from the DJI air unit and the plug is here. I don't want to solder everything because uh, this has a plenty of plugs here to connect all the components that we need. And the stack will sit something like this. So I have the pads exposed up if we need to attach something. And now we will start connecting the uh, peripheral uh, component one by one. With the DJI Air unit, since I am not using the remote control from DJI, I am using ELRS and Radio Master TX16S uh, Max 2. I will remove those two wires, the yellow and brown one, since uh, these are for the S box, uh, S bus. Uh, so you can use the remote control from DJI. If you are using this, uh, then you have to leave those and. Those two wires, the red one and the black, they are for powering the unit. I will take them out too and connect them to an external BEC. This is a BEC from Matic and I have 12 volts here because I heard some people that uh, they lost connection with the DJI Air unit since it draws a lot of current from the BEC from the flight controller and uh, it will not i don't think it will happen but for safety i will do this uh, since i'm uh, building it from scratch i will uh, take the step and and do this so we need to remove those two wires and those two from one end because on the other end i will connect them to the matic uh, back you need to lift those a little bit up and pull the wire back like this and pull the wire and it will get out we will attach the wires from the DJI air unit uh, as you can see here in the diagram the VTX will be the air unit I mean here in this it will be like this so as you can see here I have the 5 volts the ground TX I have TX here and RX here because they are uh, the RX from the GPS will go to the TX from the flight controller and here the same I have TX from the GPS and RX here so we have it like this and we have to start with the 5 volts wire this is this one okay perfect now we can connect it to our flight controller now I want to connect this one this is for the receiver I have everything here I can solder it up here but I want to use this if it's available 
Now we can put it in place and put the screws up so it will be cleaner. Let's connect those wires to the receiver. The 5 volts. So this is the RX in the flight controller and it will go to the TX here. And this is our TX and here RX. We can put the antenna and close it up like this. Now what we have left is to connect the Matic back to the DJI wires. 6 to 60 volts in, ground in, ground out and here the output is from 5 to 12 volts and if you need 12 volts you need to bridge this pad here. It's really really smart. So I will bridge this uh, pad because I need 12 volts. This is the plus that goes directly to the battery. And this is the ground that goes directly to the battery as well. This is the first one and this is the second one. So this is the ground from the DJI air unit. And this is the plus from the DJI. Now we want to connect the other side to the battery and we are done. The last thing that we have to do now is to connect the buzzer. I have the VFly buzzer right here. It's really nice buzzer and I have the scheme here. So I have uh, the yellow one is the buzzer minus, buzzer plus is the 5 volts, the red one, and ground is the black one. And here, if you take a closer look, we have buzzer minus, buzzer plus, and the ground we can connect it anywhere. A little bit flux as usual. And the ground, I will take it from here. And the buzzer, I am thinking to put it here, because here we have some space. And I will put it with double-sided tape. Those wires will not go anywhere, but... Uh, for security and to make it look better, I prefer to put some tape here. So guys, it's finished. The moment of truth. I really advise you, as I said, to use this guy. This is the smoke stopper and it will prevent you from burning your uh, stuff here if uh, something is touching and something is not well executed so let's put this here i put an adapter because i can't connect this one directly here because uh, it's uh, hard due to this and now let's see what is happening oh i really love this sound nice nice guys nice great so the buzzer as you heard is working and here you have a really nice touch this is an indicator of the battery so i have 30 percent i mean 70 percent uh, charged uh, i have led here i have the uh, receiver working and let's see the dgi i have light here on the dgi too and on the gps as well so everything is working fine let's see if the buzzer is working as intended so i will remove the battery and it will start beeping and after 40 seconds i will fast forward you will hear the 
big sound. Now it beeps every five seconds, but after it will beep uh, more uh, frequently and louder, even louder. And it beeps like this for 30 hours, guys, 30 hours. And to turn it off, you have a button here. Here, I made sure that I can access this button or you have to connect the battery for five seconds and uh, remove it. So it is working, guys. Great, 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 really nice. I love it. Now, I want to connect it to the computer to activate the Vista and uh, uh, configure it a little bit so we can test it out. Now that I know that it's working, it's time to close it up and uh, attach all the final components and final touches. And we will start with this battery plug right here. We have the, those screws, but I printed out uh, this uh, GoPro mount. You don't have to print uh, to put it if you don't want, since I am using the O3 unit. But I wanted to show you how it looks with the GoPro and I will put it. And those screws that came with the frame are a little bit short. So I took the screws from the motors and I will use them here. This is how it will look with the GoPro and I put the strap right here, squeeze the battery here and, and perfect. This is how it looks guys. It's really good looking drone. I really love it. I love how everything is organized right here. You have a space for the GoPro to sit and you i love this touch how the battery sits here because you don't have to worry about the cable being uh, uh, in the way of the props one more thing i want to show you is the weight of the drone so with the gopro props and everything it weights 800 grams <laughs> which is a lot but if you choose to fly it without the gopro about 660 grams and you can get the mount here out but it will not save so much weight in my opinion but i think it's okay for for a free uh, for a five inch uh, drone i want to configure the receiver now so i can connect my radio master uh, to the drone and for this i have to flash the alrs firmware to the unit for this we need the express elrs configurator like this and we choose here the latest version 3.2.1 you have to have the same version on your radio so just uh, make sure i already um uh, chose the radio master 2.4 device and the radio master rp1 or 2 i have the two version i think here rx beta flight pass through standard mode and here you have to put your binding phrase that you put on your uh, radio and you have to build we wait a little bit and we have it right here. Now we need to plug the battery so the receiver will turn on. If you look here, the receiver is blinking here, green. And in a second it will start blinking uh, very fast, in 40 seconds I think. And then uh, the wireless is activated for binding and you we will see it here in the wireless uh, networks now if you can see here it's blinking fast we see express lrs rx receiver we connect to this one so we have to type in here 
10.0.0.1 and this page pops out and we can put the binding phrase right here but we since we did a file we build a file we go to the update tab here and now we choose the file I just copy it on my desktop for ease of uh, access this is the file and we hit update it's being flashed right now and update successful I want to connect now the drone to beta flight to configure my receiver and see if it is connected to the drone so now it's connected let's do the calibration first now we reset the z-axis and see if it uh, performs uh, correct when I move it. We have to choose here serial and crossfire. Let's see if our receiver is connected. As you can see we have feed here. Let me check the basic functions. The throttle is doing what it's supposed to do. The pitch, pitch two. The roll is not doing what uh, we need. And the yaw as well. So here we have to choose uh, different channels. R and here A, save and reboot and now I think it's, it will be good yeah perfect so we just uh, inverted the functions so we can do yo here and roll in the other side now we go to the modes tab and define our arm so our arm is here aux1 and i want it to be here when arming angle mode i want this one i want it to be here in angle mode Flip over after crash. So I'll put it here. Beeper, this one. This is to activate uh, the beeper when you lose uh, the sig when you lose the drone. You can actually activate it uh, manually. I mean, when you hit this it will be activated the motors and the beeper too or it will be activated alone when it sends a loss lose of power from the battery now let's test uh, the radio if it functions the way we want when i flip the arm uh, switch it will arm the motors Now I want uh, to see the order of the motors mapped correctly in beta flight and if they spin the right way. I am sure that they are not uh, mapped correctly because the ESC is not mounted correctly. I mean it's mounted correctly of course but it's not uh, the right way uh, for beta flight. I mean here is motor number one and on the ESC motor number one I think it's here so this is why we have to remap uh, uh, all the motors and we will go to the motors tab motor number one here it should be this one but it will not be this one it will spin this one I think yeah motor number two it has to be this but it will spin this motor number three has to be this one but instead it will be that one yeah 
Now we have to do the correct mapping for the motors. And for this, we you have to choose the reorder motors. And I understand the risks and start. So this is spinning. This one is spinning. This is this. This is this. And this is this. Save. Now if we go again to motors tab and activate the motors, we spin motor number one and it should be this one. Now we have to see if they are spinning in the right direction. So now motor number one and motor number three should spin in this direction. So outward. Yeah. So let's spin motor number one. It is spinning in the right direction, right? Yeah, it's hitting me from this side, so it's spinning out. Motor number three. It is spinning the same direction. It is hitting my hand from this side, so it's spinning inward, which is good. Motor number four. It is spinning the wrong direction because it's hitting my hand from this side and this means that it's spinning like this and it should be the other direction for this we have the motor direction tab and we go to motor number four and we reverse it Now, motor number four. Now it's spinning in the right direction. So this is, guys, the basic configuration for uh, this drone. You have to do some uh, tweaks and things, but uh, basically it, it flies. So let's head uh, outside and see how it flies. Yeah. 